All right, guys, welcome back. So in this video, we're going to be covering something called NBS. So what what is NBS? NBS is just the short way we call N Bromo succinamide. All right, and so um, this does involve radicals, right? I know nobody likes radicals that much, but um, you do have to know it on the exam. Uh, and whether or not you have to know the mechanism, that they will tell you in the lecture. But so just in case, I will show it here, right? And so how does this work? So this is what the structure looks like. All right. And so this is going to be your uh, your uh, N-bromosuccinide. And succinamide, sorry, and it's going to be NBS. I'm just going to call it NBS from now on. All right, and I'm going to show you the whole mechanism. So this is similar to the kinetic and thermodynamic stuff. Um, so what we're going to do is I want to just start out with this sort of structure. All right, this is a very simple structure, something that, so, and we'll get to the more complicated stuff later on. All right, so what the first step is in this reaction is this nitrogen and the bromine they split from each other, all right? And since we're using radicals in this case, they generate radicals. So remember, use your radical arrows, the fish hook arrows, all right? And so remember, since there's two electrons in a bond, one goes to the bromine, the other one to the nitrogen, all right? So we're going to create this Br radical, all right? And so whenever you're doing an NBS, what you need to do is we're taking hydrogens here. All right, so in NBS, the first step, once we have that bromine radical, is to take a hydrogen. Now, you always take the more stable hydrogen. Uh, so you take the hydrogen that will form the more stable radical. In this case, we want to have it next to the double bond because it can be resonance stabilized, correct? We don't want to pick it, the hydrogen over there because then it can't be resonance stabilized with the double bond. And it doesn't matter if you pick that top hydrogen or this bottom hydrogen. It's the same structure, all right? And so let's see what happens. So this is going to form part of a bond, right? Then it's going to, um, part of that single bond, right? Since it's got two electrons, forms the other half of that bond. And then that last electron goes onto that carbon. Let me draw that a little better. So what's going to happen is we're going to get a radical now right there, all right? So now we have this radical, right? And yeah, we got um, HBr, right? So what's going to happen is now that HBr, it's going to react with another one of these NBS structures. Here's a nitrogen. All right. So it's going to react with HBr, that HBr we just formed. So it's going to... The nitrogen now wants to take a hydrogen, and this Br breaks off. All right. Oh, and sorry, it doesn't break off. So the nitrogen is going to take that hydrogen. They're going to form a single bond. Then this, these two Br's form a bond. So now we get hydrogen there and Br. BR, right? This is just BR2. And so this BR2 is what's going to react with our radical. So we're going to put them up here. So what's going to happen is the radical reacts with this BR, and this one breaks off. This gives us a BR where the radical used to be, and a BR radical separated, all right? So this is what we really want to just care about. Now, when we do NBS, NBS always makes the most stable radical possible. And then we attach the bromine there. All right. Now, you have to consider resonance. All right. And so let's see. Let's do an example problem. So we're going to do just uh, predict the major products. And we just write NBS when we're doing these reactions. All right. So where is our most stable radical? All right. Remember, we always want to kind of pick it around the carbons of the, of the uh, double bond. Never the carbons part of the double bond. All right. 
or we, um, that's not going to be um, the one we take the hydrogen because we're going to end up destroying the double bond in the process. Well, actually, we're not, but remember, because since there's hydrogens here, if you take the hydrogen, you're going to put the radical on there. This is a vanillic radical. Remember, not stable at all. So what's going to happen is we're going to take the hydrogens around it, so that's either this hydrogen or this hydrogen. All right? So I want to skip ahead. I'm not going to focus too much on the mechanism. All right? It's just going to take a while. And so I'm going to just put the radicals on. We either put the radical there or we put the radical there. Now let's determine the uh, radical stability. This is a tertiary allylic. This is secondary allylic. All right. Once you figure out the more stable radical, don't even focus on the that uh, least substituted one, the less stable one. All right, so erase that one out. So now what you have to do is with NBS, just resonate around. All right, so there's only one thing we can do here with resonance. I can use this double bond to form a, another, to move that double bond around and the radical will also move. So in this case, a double bond forms there and the radical forms here. All right. And so we want to do is we want to, and um, so once we actually looked at the resonance, right, we have these two structures now, those two radicals, we're going to just start attaching the bromines. All right. So in this case, we have two positions we can attach the bromines. So this isn't like in kinetic and thermodynamic where we kind of focus on like one cross out, maybe the other. All right. What we need to do is we need to attach the bromine to all the positions where we got those radicals. All right, so that means when we react it, and again, I'm not going to show the mechanism, put the BR there. For this guy, BR there. So we have two products in this case. All right, and uh, so we're going to go with, we pick both of them. All right, so you see, I didn't like make a distinction between thermal and kinetic products. In this case, we don't consider the thermal and kinetic. That's for those dienes. When we do NBS, we just kind of put the radical, move it around, move it around, and make your pro put your products down. All right. So let's do another example. So we're gonna draw this out. NBS. All right. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to draw the products again, do the same thing. So we got to figure out the most stable uh, carbocation, the most stable, sorry, not carbocation, radical, right? Now, one thing in this problem is they gave us, and obviously I didn't copy and paste the problem, but I'm still showing you guys what they gave. They gave us one of the products and they said, draw the other one. All right. So let's do, let's figure out how to even form that one. Remember, we always pick the hydrogen kind of that's around the double bond. So that's going to be either of these. I'm going to just pick this one because that's where the BR is over there, just to make it easier to see. Oh, my bad. So the radical they formed is right there. So now what we have to do resonate them around. Well, the, this is the radical they formed. So if we just attach the BR, use the BR radical. And again, I'm not really showing the mechanism fully. I'm just keep, I'm using that BR radical to show you. We get this. And that's the exact product they have. But they wanted the other one. So let's go ahead and resonate now. Let me draw that a little bit easier to see. All right. And so what's going to happen now is the double bond now forms there. And the radical moves over there. Now we made another product. Take the BR, use your radical. And remember, we you, you actually use BR2 in this case, but I'm using just the BR radical just because um, uh, because 
that's the whole point of this BR2. We use, we don't attach the BR2 like we did in the Alkene editions. We actually use the radical version. So this splits up, splits up into the radical. All right, and so I'm just using BR radical to simplify it a little bit easier. All right, and so these, this is, would have been the other product that they would have asked for. All right, so let's go on to another question. All right, so what are the products? So the major product, and in this case, I'll show you the three products they asked for. It's like one of those A, or one only, two only, three only, one and two, one and three, two and three, stuff like that. So here's what they gave us. They are there, so this is number one. Number two, was right here. And number three was this guy, all right? And so let's figure this out. So remember, we want to put the radical where it's the most stable, and we always pick the um, we always want to pick around our double bond. So the carbons around our double bond of this one, all right? This one and this one, okay? So we have three positions we need to look at. So I'm going to draw all three, and we'll see what happens. So we can put the radical there, right? And so what I'm going to do is like I'm going to color this one red. So I'll make this radical red. Let's color this one blue, and let's color this one purple. All right, so let's do the blue one now. Okay, and so the blue radical is now right there. And the purple radical is going to be right there on the methyl. So which of these are the more stable ones? All right. So let's see. In this case, right over here, we're going to have a tertiary. Aluic. This is a secondary aluic. And this is primary allylic. All right? So remember, in NBS, the way we do this is once you've put the radical in all the possible positions around that double bond, we only look at the more stable one and we cross everything else out. So erase these guys. And then once we have our most stable radical, we resonate him around and those are our answers. All right? So what we're gonna do is we got our most stable radical, time for resonance, all right? So what's gonna happen is this can form part of a double bond. One of the electrons from that can form another one, and then we can put an, a radical over there. So what this creates is a double bond there and a radical there, all right? Now, be careful here, all right? So let's say, let, before we even say anything, let's look at our choices. All right, so we, here are our two options, and let's get rid of those arrows, actually. And we need to attach our BR where our, radical are, where our radicals are. All right, let's move these down. So once we have all the resonance radicals, attach the BRs. BR, double bond. All right, so... Let's see if we can eliminate any choices. So you can see on both of these structures, the BR is at the carbon with the methyl. Choice one doesn't have that. So choice one cannot be an answer. Choice three also cannot be an answer because it's not at a carbon with the methyl. All right, so we're left with already just choice two as the answer. But let's just look at this really quickly. These are not two separate structures. All right, so look at this. Let's try to number. I want to name, number the carbon with the BR and the methyl as one, two, three. Carbon one is the methyl and the BR. Carbon two is the double bond. Carbon three has the double bond and the methyl. Let's do the same here. One, two, three. Carbon one is a methyl and a BR. Carbon two is a double bond. And carbon three is the methyl and the double bond. These are the same. All right. So 
we get one product in this case. So through resonant, again, we are getting one product. So this is similar to when we did kinetic and thermodynamic, how we can somehow have um, the kinetic and thermodynamic as the same product. But remember, when doing NBS, step one. So for step one, it's going to be draw all stable radicals. So this is usually going to be around that double bond. Step two, out of the previous radical, so um, so radicals from step one, find the most stable out of them. Find the most stable radical from step one. Step three, draw resonance structures from this most stable radical. All right, and then those are gonna be your answers. Just watch out and the question, it, it may hint that you have uh, one product or they may just ask, find the most stable radical. So remember, you guys should know your radical trends, right? Which is the same as carbocation trends and you should be comfortable with resonating radicals. And so also watch out for this, how you see we have the same exact product, all right? So this can definitely, uh, this can definitely come up. I do wanna do one more problem before we go. What's gonna be the answer to this? So they just asked the major product. They didn't say uh, all the product, they just said major product. All right, so how would we figure out a major product? Before, we didn't talk about major products. All right, so let's see. In this case, we don't have a double bond, right? Or at least the normal double bonds. We have benzene double bond, all right? So remember, we're never gonna take one directly on the carbon of the double bond. That never happens. So we have these three carbons to choose from. This hydrogen, this hydrogen, or one of the hydrogens there. Remember, there are multiple hydrogens for those carbons, but I'm just going to draw one because they're all the same. So if we pick this hydrogen, we're going to have a radical on a primary carbon, not stabilized by anything. Put it on there, and you're going to have a radical on a secondary carbon. All right, Better than this one, but not stabilized too much with anything else. This guy, this is a secondary benzylic hydrogen. So that radical that we would form there would it be in resonance with the benzene. So that's more stable, all right? So we're gonna pick that um, hydrogen to form a radical. So we're gonna draw the benzene. And here's our radical. This is the radical we're gonna wanna form. Now, in this case, there they it was a multiple choice question and they did give us um, some options here. Um, now, when you're gonna, so in NBS, we usually resonate around. Now, in this case, you don't actually want to resonate around because we don't still want to destroy the aromaticity of the benzene, all right? So we don't want to form any radicals on the benzene. So all you have to do now, leave this guy as is. Think of it, no resonance. So just attach the BR to whatever we have. Here's a BR radical. Again, remember, the mechanism is a little bit different. Let me get this. One product, all right? Would you just put the benzene, uh, the, sorry, the bromine right on that radical? Don't have to resonate around the radical in this case, just because you could ruin your aromaticity on the benzene. All the choices showed that our benzene was still intact, all right, and so we would not have wanted to alter anything with our benzene. So we would just pick this as our one and only choice. All right, I hope this covered and uh, this helped clear up NBS for you guys. Again, remember, if you're a little bit confused, go to the CLC lecture notes. Uh, or rewatch the videos and you can always email me and ask for help. All right. And so I will see you guys in the next video.